Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. Uh, as we gather, I want to uh, not only say welcome, but say I'm glad you're here and with us uh, to worship God. Later in the service, uh, we will have our prayers of the people, and you have an opportunity to put in the chat in Zoom or in Facebook, uh, any prayer requests you have or celebrations for those prayers of thanksgiving, and uh, you can put those in the chat for Zoom or Facebook, and we will do our best to incorporate them into the prayers of, uh, prayers of the people. I believe that's it. We'll have uh, several announcements later in the service. But thank you for joining us, and uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Let us join together in the call to worship. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us worship God. We begin our worship uh, with the, the hymn, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above.
And now Carol Johnstone has our psalm for this morning. Hi, Carol. Hi, Bill. Thank you. Um, we're reading from Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. Friends, as we gather together each Sunday, we confess our sins, admitting our faults before God and acknowledging our need for God's grace, the grace that God is, or, and forgiveness, uh, that God is so eager to, to bestow upon us. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you that you gather us and that as we do so, we are overwhelmed by your majesty and the lordship of your love. We pray, O oh God, that you will uh, uh, bless these prayers as we uh, confess our sin before you. We confess, O oh God, that so often we fall short of uh, the, your call in our lives. We let distractions uh, get in the way. We let discouragement keep us from, uh, from participating fully in your call in our lives. Hear now our silent prayers of confession. Forgive us, merciful God. Transform our hearts, our lives, our minds, the life of service, that all we do in word and deed may glorify your name. All this we pray through Christ, who is our Lord, who is our Savior. Amen. I ask it every week at this point, who is in a position to condemn and the only, and the answer is only Christ. But it is Christ who died for us. It is Christ who rose for us. It is Christ who reigns in power for us. And it is Christ who prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So friends, believe the good news of the gospel and let us say it together. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us celebrate that forgiveness, God's forgiveness, with the Gloria Patri. This is our time with the children. And I wanna show you something. 
you know what this is? Looks like a laser gun. I guess it is in a way, uh, but, but it's a thermometer. It works like this. It worked. It says my temperature is 97.6. But you know what? I was going to tell you about how over and over again, I try to use this on myself and I can't get it to work. And now the first time I wanted it to not work, it did. 97.6. Usually 98.6 is, is, is normal. That's what we say is normal. Everybody has a little bit different normal temperature, but this is a degree below that. Have you ever had a temperature, ever had a fever, ever not felt well? When you had a fever, maybe you didn't want to do anything. You just wanted to lie in bed. Well, the scripture reading we're going to hear uh, starts off with uh, a story about Jesus healing somebody, uh, his mother-in-law, his wife's mother, uh, because she has a, a fever and is lying in bed. And he takes her by the hand, lifts her up, and her fever disappears. And then she can serve. A lot of times we feel bad for different reasons, and it gets in the way of our being able to uh, do the thing God want, things God wants us to do or do the things that Jesus calls us to do, helping other people and uh, serving, making a difference in the world. But Jesus comes to us and gets rid of our fever so that we can feel more like helping. I love that story. And I love that I can, I can make it work again. Maybe Jesus made me be able to uh, be able to work this thermometer in this moment. I don't know. But there's no fever. And so I know I can serve. You can serve too. Jesus wants you to be a part of the things he does in the world to help other people. Jesus wants to use you to help other people and make a difference and let them know that they are loved. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for fevers that leave us so that we can serve. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Let us uh, join together in our prayer for illumination. Holy God, speak to us what has been told from the beginning, your word that is the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Our story comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, uh, verses 29 to 39. Now, this story happens right after Jesus and his new disciples, Simon, Andrew, James, and John, had been at the synagogue in the morning, and uh, and there was a, a man with an unclean spirit, and Jesus casts out the unclean spirit. And then we hear, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went to the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus went to her, took her by the hand, and lifted her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. 
when evening came, they brought to him all many who were sick and possessed with demons. And Jesus healed many. Well, well the, the whole town was gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who were sick with various illnesses. And he cast out many demons. But he did not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. The next morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. There he prayed. Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus said to them, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I can proclaim the message there as well, for that is what I came to do. And so Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming in their synagogues and casting out demons. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, a little gadget here. I'm going to try it one more time. <laughs> it still works. I, I've, I don't know about you, but being somebody who has gotten out and about when it was okay to do so, um, and, you know, all masked up and going in a lot of different kinds of places, I've had my temperature taken quite a bit in the last year. And um, as a matter of fact, probably more than I've ever had it taken. What about you? You might have had your temperature taken quite, quite often. Now, in all that time in the last year, it's never, uh, it's never indicated that I ha actually had a fever. So that's, that's good news. But when I have had a fever in the past, I have really not felt well. Wanted to just lie around, maybe stay in bed. Didn't feel like getting out or, or doing things. Maybe wanted to sleep. Is that the experience you have when you have a fever? I mean, a fever is a good thing. It, it helps to fight infection. But when we have a fever, we feel pretty bad. And the higher the fever, the worse we feel. I wonder if Simon's mother-in-law felt that way when she had a fever. I, I, suspect it, I suspect she did, because we are told that she is in bed with a fever. When Jesus and his new disciples uh, come from the synagogue to the home of um, uh, 
to Simon and Andrew, th there's no time wasted in letting him know that, that Simon's mother-in-law, this is Simon Peter, by the way, that, that Simon's mother-in-law has, uh, has a fever. The way the story goes, it sounds a little sexist to me with regard to expectations and what happens. You know, I, I see them, you know, coming home from, from synagogue and, and what they find out is that she has a fever and therefore can't fix them food, can't make lunch. One, well, Jesus must be pretty hungry, you know, because going to synagogue, casting out an unclean spirit while he's there, you know, that takes a lot out of you and you kind of work, at, work up an appetite. But Simon's mother-in-law can't fix, uh, fix lunch because she's in bed with a fever. So Jesus goes to her, takes her hand, lifts her up, and the fever disappears. And then she begins, we are told, she begins to serve them. Now, she can fix them lunch. Isn't that great? Something interesting about how this story is told. The, the word that is used, uh, that, that is translated as serve, as in, and she began to serve them, uh, it is a verbal form of the Greek noun that we translate as deacon. So she begins to, to deacon them. <laughs> Sometimes it, uh, forms of that word are translated as minister or, or ministry. Sometimes over this last year, actually sometimes over my whole ministry, but particularly this last year, I have been, had a bit of a fever, uh, not, not one that would be picked up with this, but, but a fever nonetheless. That fever might be discouragement, or it might be being overwhelmed with the number of things to do, but, but more likely overwhelmed with the number of things to do that I haven't figured out how to do. And even with help, I've just wanted to lie in bed or sit around because I didn't feel like doing those things. Sometimes it's discouragement. Sometimes it's being overwhelmed. Sometimes it's some kind of d depression. It's, it's a fever of sorts that makes it difficult to serve. Have you experienced that? Especially when there's a lot to do. And as we look at Jesus' activity, particularly, you know, putting a pause on that moment in the in the house uh, right before lunch, <laughs> uh, you know, Jesus ends up uh, healing all sorts of people with various diseases. He casts out demons. He goes out to pray. He needs to go to the surrounding towns to proclaim the, his message. And while doing that, he casts out other demons. And I imagine heals other people. Well, I know he heals other people because then I keep reading on. First thing after that is the, the healing of a leper and then a paralytic, someone who can't walk. You know, there's a lot to do. But 
but sometimes there's just a, a fever. It makes us want to lie down and It'll happen later. The fever. But we have this story about a woman with a fever. And because of that fever, she just she can't manage to serve. And I think so often we, or I, am that woman. And then Jesus comes to me and takes my hand and lifts me up. And the fever leaves and I serve. Him, others. And I think that's happened for you as well. In the midst of our discouragement, in the midst of our malaise, in the midst of uh, all the things that maybe we want to do or feel compelled to do, but just can't manage to, to, to get out and, and get up and, and serve, Jesus comes and takes you by the hand and lifts you up. And if hasn't, will. I believe that. Where are the places, what are the things that you've felt called to do? Maybe there's some, there's some kind of nudging or... It, you know, it might be something subtle, or it might be something very strong, but you just haven't managed to, to do that yet. The good part of the good news of Jesus is that he comes and takes us by the hand, lifts us up. takes away the fever so that we can serve. Now, sometimes the fever comes back, or at least it does for me. And then Jesus is at work again. What I want to invite you to do is sit some, in some silence this week. Just as Jesus um, went out to pray in a deserted place, sit in silence and listen for the call of God. Listen for the call to serve. And whatever it is, Then picture Jesus coming to you. Ask Jesus to come to you. And know that Jesus takes you by the hand and lifts you up. Takes away that fever of discouragement or being overwhelmed or confused or not knowing what or how to do it. and equips you to serve. Then, you'll have a message to proclaim. It's a story of what God works in your life. Something to share with your, your family, your friends, strangers, Something to, to share as a witness to yourself, to remind you in those times when you are discouraged that Jesus is at, 
at work in your life to make a difference in this world. A world that needs a lot of service empowered by the power of Jesus. A world that has a lot of demons that need casting out. Some even within us. And we will begin to serve. Thanks be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, friends, uh, let us join in singing the song, Good to Me. Good morning. So I want to remind you that today is Super Bowl Sunday. Not S-U-P-E-R, well, it is that too, but uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, 
we are re uh, receiving uh, nothing for advertising Campbell's soup, but it doesn't have to be Campbell's soup. It could be, oh, this is Campbell's too. It's just, <laughs> it's just Campbell's chunky. So, um, but um, uh, all week people have uh, dropped off cans of soup or, or other uh, non-perishable items uh, to uh, put in the good sand closet to celebrate and uh, give to the Super, Super Bowl Sunday offering that uh, the youth represent or, or um, sponsor. Now, uh, this is a, um, an event or an offering that started with a, um, a Presbyterian youth group in South Carolina um, well over 20 years ago, and it, it still goes strong. So, there is a box outside at the church, and it says Super Bowl offering, and you can uh, drop your, your cans or your whatever it is you bring there. If you want to give money to this offering to help support the Good Sam Closet, uh, which is our food closet, you can um, just give online or send in a, a, a check. Now, we have something else big coming up. And that, oh, wow. Uh, so I'm gonna we, have, we have the season of Lent. And so uh, next week, Valentine's Day, we're going to uh, help you get ready for that. And Carol Stanley is going to tell you about all that's happening uh, right now. So as Bill said, season of Lent actually starts on Ash Wednesday, which is February 17th. Uh, the color of Lent is purple, so I'm, I'm getting dressed here ahead of time. But next Sunday on the 14th, we will have a drive-by event. You, you can get out of your car, but basically you'll drive through and you will pick some of the items or all of the items that we are providing for you that day um, that you can use during the season of Lent. The first thing is you will receive some ashes. So... Um, uh, these will be in little bags that the ashes will be for you to use during the virtual Ash Wednesday service that will be on the 17th. So you will receive some ashes in a little bag. And then the other options are uh, a Lenten devotional. And this is a daily devotional that you would use at your home. So um, this is one of the options. Also for the children, we have... Um, worship bulletins that some of them every Sunday, I get a picture from Hope Blandin that she sends me where she has colored in one of the bulletins that goes along with our worship service. So Hope, you'll be getting the rest as will the other children uh, that can be used on Sunday or at another time. We also have figures that you can make. And just like the nativity story, you can be um, using these figures to act out the story of, of Holy Week. In addition, Every Sunday, um, starting the week after the Sunday after the 17th, Bill will refer to one item during, um, during the sermon, and that will um, fit with one of the items in a bag that you will get. So it will be something to remind you at home of what Bill is talking about on Sunday morning. So we encourage you to stop by and pick up this item. So we have things like, what, a rainbow? Sand, heart, across, across, all sorts of things. All sorts of things that will um, that Bill will be using in his services on Sunday morning. In addition, Stephanie Morell is providing this with Lenten soup. It won't be Campbell's, but it'll be a Lenten soup mix that Stephanie Morell is putting together a for Lenten us. A Lenten soup mix of lentil soup, right? Yes. In addition, we will have some items that go with a virtual Google Classroom that I will explain more about, but you will that will be another option as well. Finally, because it is Valentine's Day, you will also have the option of different types of candy. We have a wide variety and you will be able to pick out what candy you want to put in your lentil in your little heart box since it is Valentine's Day. So we encourage you to come by next Sunday from one to two. As you can see, this is not a children's event. This is an all church event. So we encourage everybody in the church just to drive by sometime between one and 2 p.m. to pick up your items 
uh, for it's called our Lent event, and we want to make um, Lent meaningful for all of our families. So it thank can be you. a romantic Valentine's <laughs> outing. <laughs> Also, they should know that, yes, we will be doing things on Easter, although the, the, at least the 10 o'clock service will be virtual. We will also have butterflies and Easter eggs. We will have an Easter event sometime in the afternoon. So be watching for more information on that as well. All right. Thank you, Carol. And now, oops, I have to dig through some things here. Okay. And now uh, let us, uh, I believe that's all our, oh, I, uh, one other announcement is that um, I think somewhere for Sunday morning live, it got put out that there was a, a time different from the, uh, I'm not sure where that was, but there was a time different from the one o'clock. So it's one o'clock uh, today. So um, let's see. Now let us uh, join in our um, our prayers of the uh, people, but um, a, uh, a sad uh, note uh, as we move into that is um, that uh, uh, John and Lee Millsap's uh, uh, little granddaughter who was born a, uh, a few week, uh, a few months ago uh, passed away. Uh, she's just struggled the, all the way through and uh, it was just uh, too much for her. And um, we, uh, we lift up John and Lee and uh, their son and daughter-in-law and, um, and pray for them. But let's, let's turn to God in prayer. Lord, our God, we lift to you uh, the, the concerns of our hearts and we, we pray that you will uh, bless the ways in which we, we turn to you we pray that you will always open our hearts and minds to um, your hand that equips us to serve. And we pray that you will um, delight us in, in your care. We lift to you, O oh God, those about whom we are concerned. We, we pray, O oh God, for, for Carol Banner as she uh, moves toward finishing up her chemo treatments. We pray for, and we pray uh, strength for her, and we, we lift up Helen Richardson, uh, Angela's brother-in-law, Dave. We lift up Catherine Vickers, Jay and Cheryl's sister-in-law, uh, uh, Diana Phillippe's friend, uh, Christina Clark. Um, we uh, lift up um, Elizabeth Marr, and, uh, and uh, continuing uh, health concerns uh, uh, for her, uh, particularly um, on her birthday today. Um, she's had a, a long um, health struggle, and Lord, we pray your, your healing and your strength. Uh, we lift up uh, Mary Amiette uh, in her uh, COVID uh, diagnosis and pray your healing. That's my, my aunt. We uh, lift up uh, the family and friends of uh, Bob Williams and Harvey Durand and John Richardson. And then, Lord, of course, we, we lift up um, the, the family of Maori Millsap and um, particularly her parents and her, her grandparents, uh, Lee and John. And we pray uh, your, your comfort and the blessing of, of uh, their tears uh, to, to uh, cleanse and to, to heal. We have, and then another uh, uh, we uh, ask a healing, O oh God, for, for John, uh, Maria, Kick. Uh, Vesna, Laura, and Susan, uh, friends and or family of Lenore. Lord, we lift, this, lift up this world in which we live with all of its, uh, its challenges and the, uh, <clears throat> the uncertainty and the ambiguity. We lift up the, the, the conflict. We lift up 
uh, our world and the, the pandemic that we continue to experience. And we pray your deliverance and your renewal and your new life. Lift up our world, O God, by the hand, remove the fever that we may ever more thoroughly serve you. All this we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And uh, now, friends, uh, we have our time of offering, and I want to uh, remind you that there is a, a link in the chat for Zoom and for Facebook that takes you to online giving uh, so that uh, you can give in that way during this time during our service or at another time. Or you can uh, give in the, the same old ways by, uh, uh, by mail or, or dropping something off by the, the church during the week, but you might want to make sure somebody's here uh, because the, um, uh, due, to, due to our fire, which we also pray for recovery for that and gratitude for those who help us navigate all of that. But due to the fire and uh, limited time in the office because of COVID, we, uh, uh, well, you just, you should call and make sure uh, that somebody's going to be here. All of that said, let us, um, uh, let us present our gifts before the Lord as we hear the choir sing on eagle's wings.
uh, I was just reminded that uh, in the email that many of you receive, most of you, um, uh, from the church where it, it says there's a button that says give online, uh, that takes you to uh, our website uh, where, where you can give. Uh, also, I, what was that other thing? Oh, yes, I forgot to mention during the, um, the welcome, please, uh, like, if you're on Facebook, uh, like us, put, put a comment in there that lets us know you are here and are with us. And um, um, so glad you can join us that way. Now let us pray. Lord God, we lift up uh, this offering to you and we pray your, uh, your blessing upon it. Multiply it in uh, ways that uh, feed uh, more and more folks in a variety of ways. We pray, O oh God, that you will encourage us with your grace, and we thank you for the, the gratitude that you place in our hearts that generates uh, generosity and the compassion that um, moves us to serve in a variety of ways. All these things we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And now uh, let us join in singing, Come Heal This Land.
things for us Do they fall from heaven still because of us But we have tasted grace And we have known your mercy But we have not shown this grace to man Here is a covenant Friends, go from this place in the power of Jesus, who himself came to serve and equips us to serve, even in the face of the fevers that present themselves to us. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, now and forever, and let all God's children say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share that peace with one another uh, through our Zoom chat and uh, Facebook chat and other ways that you might do that. Uh, thanks for joining us. Blessings to you. It's uh, good to have you with us this week, and we'll see you next week.